Regardless of her well-deserved title as the most cruel concentration camp guard, Anneliese Kolman not only managed to avoid punishment, but also had every opportunity to turn from an executioner of the Nazi regime into a complete victim of it. The reason this Nazi war criminal is so little known is that she was a latecomer to the concentration camp system and so-called worked only in camps in Germany, which is why the general public is not as apprehensive at the mention of her name as the world-famous and bloodthirsty executioners like Koch, Grise and others. Although what was done by this criminal, who was not personally responsible for any death, arouses a feeling of downright disgust. You're watching X War History and today we will tell you about Anneliese Kolman and who she really is. Anneliese Kolman, born in the year 1921, lived a rather quiet and unremarkable life. Even joining the Nazi party had no impact on her career, working as an ordinary trolley driver until November 1944. It was only when she joined the SS that her career changed dramatically. After a short training course, she was promoted to the position of Aufsacherin, a concentration camp guard. Originally, she served at Neugamme, but was transferred to Hamburg Tiefstack concentration camp in 1945. The Cruelest Guard Even though Anneliese Kolman served in the concentration camps for a rather short time, she managed to establish herself as one of the most brutal and ruthless concentration camp employees. Many prisoners recalled that Anneliese Kolman beat the prisoners with any means at her disposal for any reason, and she beat them until the very moment she got tired of it. Anneliese Kolman had no particular way of treating prisoners, but she had perfected the already widespread methods of torture and mockery. For any offense, a prisoner was beaten until she or he was choking on blood. It is known that one prisoner was beaten on her hands for stealing a piece of bread to such an extent that her hands became swollen and blackened. For some inexplicable reasons, Anneliese Kolman especially showed hatred toward the elderly and pregnant prisoners. She always beat them both with particular care until the unfortunate victim practically ceased even to show signs of life. It should be noted, however, that despite the fierce atrocity, no evidence of the murder of prisoners could be found after the war, except for one, which was objected to by a lawyer. Harassment The other type of torment which Anneliese Kolman inflicted on the prisoners was direct harassment. It is difficult to draw conclusions about cause and effect here, but perhaps this is what kept the guard alive in the first place. Moreover, despite her cruelty, she sometimes slept in the barracks with the prisoners without the slightest fear of retaliation. It is very possible that women who were accustomed to an atmosphere of constant humiliation of abuse, even while receiving a perverse respect that did not involve violence, considered it a kind of indulgence for their own grim existence. Of course, it is also terrible torture and even more terrible psychological torture, but the fact remains. Returning to the case of Anneliese Kolman, it was Jewish women in whom for some reason she was interested in, in that sense. Several affairs with prisoners were established. Incidentally, among the prisoners, Kolman was referred to exclusively in the masculine form and not otherwise than as booby. Thus, after the war, a former prisoner from Czechoslovakia, Vera Fuksova, said of Anneliese Kolman herself. In Hamburg, we already had an SS woman, a guard in the camp, a young girl, we called her booby, and she treated us kind of all right, a young pretty girl, and she fell in love with one of our fellow prisoners. The guard had several such infatuations. One of the first was Lot Tovinta, a Jewish woman from Bohemia. The second was Charlotte Rosna, also a Jewish ballerina. Finally, many prisoners recall a certain prisoner named Helena Soma, for whom the guard's feelings were so strong that she even planned to run away with her to Prague after her release. The same woman, Fuksova, told the court about this. I don't know how close the girl got to her, but her mother was there for her, and she would do anything for her, and because of boobies she was okay. These right here are the words that explain why women prisoners were pleased to have such an affair. There is a great deal of evidence of violence at the hands of the guards and warders, but the violence itself, strange as it may seem, was paid for, either with food, privileges, medicines and requests. The wildness and hideousness of such treatment of prisoners is obvious, but no one can understand what the unfortunates themselves experienced at such moments. Perhaps it was worse than literal hell. Arrest, Trial and Retribution 
To avoid reprisal, Coleman committed an amazing act of impudence and brazenness. Moreover, the circumstances were such that it seemed as if some kind of providence had helped to realize the plan. On April 8, 1945, Coleman accompanied the prisoners of her camp to the concentration camp Bergen-Belsen. After an argument with the camp commander who refused to release her beloved Helene Somme, she got on her bicycle and rode to Hamburg. And after some time, she secretly returned and also secretly insinuated herself into the ranks of prisoners, dressed in a prisoner's uniform and taking advantage of the chaos that reigned in the camp at the time. Moreover, no one even paid any attention to her at first. On April 15th, when the camp was liberated by the British, Annalisa Kolman was no longer a cruel guard, but an unhappy victim of the Nazi regime. Yet she managed to stay in this status for only two days. The former prisoners of the Tiefstadt camp identified the guard and, after hesitating, turned her over to the new officials. According to her recollections, the women inmates did not immediately decide to turn over the guard, because she was quite friendly to some of them. This further shows the extent to which the psyche of the unfortunate women was mutilated, who even the outright purchase or a hint of it in the future of a favorite exterior body, with the usual extra rations considered a kind of attitude toward themselves. Without a doubt, it was more frightening there than in hell. Foxova wrote about it this way. After Belzen's release, we suddenly found Booby among us, dressed in the striped clothes of a prisoner. What to do now? She treated us well, but she was an SS woman, so what to do with her? As a consequence, Kolman, along with other guards and wardens, had to dig graves for the dead and executed prisoners, and then carry the bodies to their burial places. The former guard was then taken to the prison in Zell, where she remained until her trial in June of 1946. At the trial, eyewitnesses testified that Annalisa Coleman beat the prisoners, especially in the face, and often punished them with a stick for the slightest wrongdoings. However, the guard herself asserted that she beat the prisoners on purpose so that they would not suffer at the hands of the more violent male guards. To the testimony of witnesses that some inmates were also kicked by Coleman, the answer was the same. It was better to let a weak woman beat them than a violent man. In fact, Annalisa presented herself as the lesser evil protecting themselves from the greater evil. Moreover, Coleman credited the fact that she often gave prisoners extra rations, forgetting to say that she only received food for those she liked and with whom she probably had a sexual relationship. At the trial, surprisingly, even the mother of the 25-year-old Nazi spoke up, claiming that her daughter hated her job and was in constant depression when she was at home. However, at the same time, no one provided an answer to the question of why she had volunteered for such a job. In summary, given that Coleman did not personally kill any prisoners, she was sentenced to two years in prison for physical as well as moral abuse of prisoners. But since the Nazi had already served those two years prior to her conviction, she was released from custody right in the courtroom. And after her release, Coleman moved to West Berlin, where she worked first as a truck driver and then as a prostitute. Finally, the former guard managed to get a job at the Sindorf Hospital as a cook, where she died right on the job at the age of 56 on September 17, 1977. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to X-War History and also leave a like. Watch our other videos.